Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're reviewing Wrestle Kingdom 17. Now before we get into the review, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, I grade everything on a 1 to 5 scale. 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. Let's jump right in. We're going to start with the pre-show. First off we get an exhibition match with Ryochi Oyawa, Iowa versus Bolton Oleg. Basically, this is a, a showcase for Bolton Oleg to show you his upcoming, I guess, career. He's currently part of an amateur wrestling team that's being managed by Yuji Nagata that's representing New Japan Pro Wrestling. This was okay. Uh, they gave it only three minutes, which I think is kind of normal. I think they've done other exhibitions where they've only went this long. I would have liked to have seen this go five, ten minutes. Just when, to me, it felt like it started getting really interesting. It started getting better, picking up some steam. The time limit came up. So for that... They had a draw there. I'm going to give this three. I liked it. I thought it was good. I wanted to see more, which maybe that's the point of this, that you're left wanting to see more. But I feel like they could have gave us that, especially with the amount of dead air time during the, the pre-show. There was a couple times they went several minutes, and I understand they do that all the time, but they could have gave us a five or ten minute exhibition instead of three. Now, going from that, we go into a what is one of my favorite events of the New Japan year, the New Japan Rambo, which if you're not familiar is basically a Royal Rumble this year and in the last year. It's come down to where the last four members go on to wrestle for the King of Pro Wrestling title. I'm not going to run through everybody that was in this. It's it was a very star-studded Rambo. The only thing that I was a little shocked with, there wasn't any surprise appearances in the Rambo. Usually there are, whether it be someone from like Ring of Honor or AEW or even WWE or a legend showing up in the Rambo. We didn't get that this year, which was a little bit surprising. Not that it made it bad. It just, the surprise was there was no surprise. It was all guys that were on the roster. It ended up with the last four people being Toro Yano, Sho, Shingo Takagi, and the Great Okan, which if you look at that, just look at that last four, four extremely talented wrestlers. Yano is kind of a guy that's always going to be in that KOPW mix. Uh, Shingo seems to be there. Even though Shingo said he wasn't going to be in this, he's in this and he got here. Also kind of expected maybe Hikaleo to go a little further than he did here. Or anybody from the United Empire other than Great Okan too, like Jeff Cobb was in here. Uh, Aaron Hanari, this would have been a great a great spot to to move Aaron Hanari stock up a little bit but again I thought it was good I did enjoy it it was fun I know I'm nitpicking here I'm gonna give it a four next up we get a match which is the uh a tribute to Antonio Inoki. We got Yuji Nagata, Satoshi Kojima, and Togi Makabe going up against Tatsuji Fujinami, Tatsui Fujinami, and I, I know I just butchered that, Minoru Suzuki, and Tiger Mask 4. They don't mention it's Tiger Mask 4, but it is Tiger Mask 4. They just call him Tiger Mask. I like this. I mean, basically this is your standard New Japan. Put the legends in a multi-man match where they can showcase a little bit without having to to be relied on to be a highlight of the match. I thought this was good. I thought it was fun. Again, a little short would be my one takeaway on this. It that probably took away from the rating, in my opinion. The team of Nagata, Kojima, and Makabe pick up the win. I'm giving this one a three. I would have liked to see a little more. I know Fujinami is getting older. I believe he's around 70. He has to be. He was on the, the very first... New Japan Pro Wrestling show 50 years ago, so he has to be either in his 70s or right before that. So I understand having him out here in a short match, but again, I would have liked to see a little bit more from it. Now going from that, we're going into the main card. We start the main card off with a junior tag team championship match. We get TJP and Francesco Acara defending against Yo and Leo Rush. This is a great spot to open the show to start it with this match, the Junior Tag Championship. They even mention it on commentary because of how fast-paced and how frenetic it's going to be and how it's going to carry over for the rest of the show. I really enjoyed this match. I thought it was fun. There was a scary spot where Leo Rush gets his head busted open on the 
on the rampway and he's bleeding pretty badly. And I don't know if it's part of the story, but the, the commentary definitely used it as part of the story as to why maybe their chances to win this got derailed. And I like that aspect of it. I like the fact that even if it wasn't part of what the story they were originally telling, the commentary picked up on that and used it to make it part of the, the story going forward used what's happening in real life to change how they're they're calling the match and that was that was really fun and i enjoyed this match a whole lot i like i like both of these teams i'd like to see yo and leo rush stick together for a little while uh, the united empire team tjp and akira pick up the win here i'm giving this one a four i thought it was really good Next up, we have a match that a lot of people were looking forward to. This is for your New Japan Pro Wrestling Women's Championship. We get Kyrie, formerly Kyrie Sane, going up against Tam Nakana, which in itself is a highly anticipated match, is a match that people want to see. With the intrigue of what happened afterwards, that's what a lot of people were looking for. I did like this match. There were a couple spots, and I... I gotta believe it was nerves, because I've seen both of these women wrestle, and they're both fantastic wrestlers. But there was a little bit of sloppiness during the match, a little bit of too many botches, in my opinion, for two women of the caliber that they are. For that, I had to take a little bit off of it. Kyrie does pick up the win. I'm giving the match a three. Then what most people, or a lot of people I know, were tuning in for or staying awake for, we have Sasha Banks making her debut as Mercedes Monet. And... She's the CEO now, which is kind of funny. I thought that was a nice little wink and nod to her Sasha Banks character. I'm not sold on the Mo Mercedes Monet name. I would have liked her to have been something different. It, I don't know. It Maybe it's because she's been Sasha Banks for so long, and uh, before that she was Mercedes KV. I don't know that I like the name so much. The outfit, the gear she was wearing, and the, the flame hairstyle was was amazing that looked great but i'm not sold on the name i thought it was a good debut the crowd was a little bit dead for it and i know new japan they're not as keen on the sports entertainment side of it and there was a lot of the the sports entertainment and the promo she cut maybe it was partly the language barrier she cut it in english and they may not have understood what she's saying or a lot of them may not have but i thought it was good a nice debut i think she's definitely going to be a needle mover whether it be here whether it be in stardom whether it be the rumored thing in a week where she tags up with soraya in AEW, i think she's definitely going to move the needle she's definitely going to have eyes on it based on what i was seeing on Twitter as I was watching the show. The, a lot of the chatter about the show from this point forward was talking about Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks, and her debut, so she definitely gained them some traction. Now going from that, we get our Tag Team Championship match. FTR defending against Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto, a.k.a. Bushimon. The more I see Bushimon, and I like both of these guys, I've liked both of these guys for a long time. The more I see Bushimon, the more this team is really growing on me as one of the great teams out in the world today. I think this is a perfect spot for them. This is two extremely talented wrestlers who are always going to be stuck in that upper mid-card, never world champion role so to put them together and to make them a dominant tag team this is almost perfect for them over the last decade or so new japan pro wrestling's had some great tag teams whether it be the gorillas of destiny uh, jeff cobb and the great okan evil and sonata even if you go back to good brothers these guys are right up there with all of them and and i think they may be the best of that group and that's high praise coming from me because I'm a huge Gorillas of Destiny fan. I think they're right there with them as far as talent-wise and how they connect with the crowd. I think this is a little bit anticlimactic. I could have seen this coming, especially since FTR lost all of their other championships. Bishamon picks up the win here. I'm giving this match a 5. I thought it was really entertaining even though I kind of expected this outcome. Now next up we have for the debuting New Japan Pro Wrestling TV Championship, Zack Sabre Jr. versus Ren Narita. I thought this was another really fun match, another match where the combatants were matched up really well against each other. Ren Narita kind of being the spiritual successor to Katsuri Shibata. He wrestles a lot like Shibata. He has a lot of the mannerisms. You could tell the influence. Zack Sabre Jr., one of the great submission wrestlers, one of the great wrestlers in the world, in my opinion. I thought this was a really fun match. 
It showed a lot on how far Ren Narita has come in just a short amount of time. I really enjoyed this. And this, again, this was when I kind of expected the, the outcome that we got. Zack Sabre Jr. does pick up the win here. I'm giving this one a four. Afterwards, we see Mikey Nichols and Shane Haste come out, and there's a little bit of tension with them and Zack Sabre Jr. They hand him a TMDK shirt, which he gladly accepts and joins the rankings. So we're starting to see where the members of the former Suzuki Goon are going to fall. They're all free agents, and that's another thing the commentary kept mentioning anytime a Suzuki Gun or Suzuki Goon member came up and wrestled, how they're free agents now and how the other groups are going to be recruiting them. I I thought this was an awesome spot. That's a great landing spot for him. He'll make a great leader slash talker for the group. He'll make a great guy to, to carry that team, which lost Jonah just recently, so they had a little bit of a, a loss. But now, picking up Zack Sabre Jr., they'll be able to go on further. I think the, the combination of him, Bad Dude, Tito, Nichols, and Haste, I think it's going to be a great group going forward. Like I said, I'm going to give this one a four. I thought it was pretty good. Next up for the Never Open Way Championship, we have the Machine Gun Carl Anderson, and he's defending against Tama Tonga. I like this match. I thought it was a good match. There is one massive negative. When we get to the end of the match, and I like the story they were telling. The story was fantastic. This was on, on pace to be a really good match, in my opinion. However, at the very end, when Tama Tonga wins with the gun stun, go back and watch it if you didn't watch it. It was very poorly botched. I mean, and this is no knocking either guy. I love Tamatanga. I just told you that Gorillas of Destiny have been one of my favorite tag teams over the last decade. I love Carl Anderson. I think he's a great wrestler. I love everything that they do. I love both of these guys. That botch, though, took away a lot of the goodwill that they had. Tamatanga does pick up the win, but because of that ending botch, I can't give it more than a three. I would have liked to give this a four or five. I thought it was way on the way of being a four and maybe even a five. But that last move, the move that everybody's going to see that wins Tamatanga the championship, it was so poorly botched. And I'm not even saying that it was botched in a way that, okay, they still performed the move. It just didn't look as good. This was bad. If you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be this negative, and I don't mean to harp on this, but when it's this bad, I gotta be honest with you guys. I have to tell you my honest feelings, and I, I just didn't enjoy that part of it. But the match itself leading up to it was fantastic. This is almost like the the Kenny Omega, John Moxley death match, where the ma match was fantastic, but everybody remembers the ending, even though the ending was terrible it's going to leave a stain on what would have been a really great match. Now going from there, we have the, the match that's uh, booked as the Kenji Muda's last match in New Japan. We have Muda, Tanahashi, and Shota Umino. And they're teaming up going up against the LIJ team of Naito, Bushi, and Sonata. I like this match, and again, this is another thing. I'm going to keep harping on this. Kevin Kelly, Gino Gambino, and Chris Charlton were great on commentary because they added so much to this. This is what a lot of pro wrestling is missing. They treated this like, first off, they treated the whole show like it was a sport. They informed the people that were watching, so whether whether you've watched every New Japan show for over the last decade, or this is the first show you're watching, you understood the stories and what was being portrayed because of how they explained it to you. They explained everything about Sonata and Muto's relationship. They explained how Naito watched a match with Muto, and that's what made him want to be a wrestler. They explained Bushi and how he looked up to Muto. I thought this was a really good match. I really enjoyed it. My favorite part of it is at the end, Shota Umino, Shooter, he's the one that picks up the win. So we have the, the past, the present, and the future, and Keji Muto, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Shota Umino, and the future is the one that picks up the win. Really good little piece, a little thing that made this even just that much better. I thought this was a really fun match. I'm giving this one a four. Next up, we get into the meat and potatoes of the show. First for the Junior Heavyweight Championship in a fatal four-way. We have Hiromo Takahashi going up against Master Wado, going up against El Desperado, and, and the defending champion, Taiji Ishimori. I really enjoyed this match. This was a lot of fun. I mean, how could you not like this with the four guys involved? Master Wado... And I said this before, when he first came out with that gimmick, I wanted to not like it, 
but he's really been able to take that and make an interesting character and make you care about him and make you believe in him, make you think that he's one of the top four or five junior wrestlers in the world. I really enjoyed this match. Hiromo does pick up the win here. And if we're being honest, I kind of expected that. He is what would be their biggest star in the junior division. So it makes a lot of sense. I'm giving this one a five. I thought it was really enjoyable. Next up, we have what is billed as one of the co-main events. Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay for the U.S. Championship. First thing I gotta say, I love the fact that Kenny Omega came out to the One Wing Angel Sephiroth song from Final Fantasy. I mean, there's a lot of Final Fantasy reference in what Kenny Omega's done throughout his career. One of my favorite games and franchises of all time. I like all of the Final Fantasy games. They're all extremely fun. Final Fantasy VII, everybody knows that as a cultural touchstone. In video gaming, it's a great game. I mean, it still holds up. Even the, the remake was really good. I just got into the Crisis Core remake, and I know I'm going down a little bit of a, a side path here, but I love that entrance. I love that they got the music for him. It was really fantastic. I thought it was really fun. This match, as highly anticipated as this match was, it over-delivered. These guys put on what is easily going to be a match of the year candidate four days in to the year. This was absolutely outstanding. From everything they were doing with the table and the violence of it, which was kind of a little bit unexpected. However, we should have seen that with both of these guys. Kenny Omega has added more violence, more hardcore stuff into his repertoire over the last couple of years. Same with Will Ospreay. Ospreay's gone and become more violent and more hardcore over the last few years. So adding that in here should have been expected however it was still jarring and they still managed to ramp up the level of violence within this athletic competition between two of the absolute best wrestlers in the world i thought this was absolutely fantastic a little bit surprised with the outcome i didn't think that omega would win by the way kenny omega does win I'm not sad with it. The one thing I do hope is that he's not just going to defend that U.S. title on AEW and the rare New Japan appearance. I hope he's on all of the New Japan shows in America and on New Japan Strong defending that title because I think that should be part of being the U.S. champion is representing New Japan and America. I thought this was a fantastic match, and I'm going to do it. I know I said in the beginning I give everything a 1 to 5 scale, and the scales are not to be taken too seriously. If you take that seriously, like if you take Dave Meltzer's scale seriously, it's one guy's opinion. Much like Dave Meltzer, there are times where I have to go above my scale where I think a match is better than even a 5. This is one of those occasions. I'm giving this match a 6. I thought it was off the charts. I, again, I think it is is a match that's going to be one of the match of the year candidates. Meltzer's probably going to even give it a better star rating than that, knowing how he rates things and what he enjoys. If you take the star ratings too seriously, please don't. This is just my kind of my grasp of showing you where I, how much I enjoyed something. I thought this was absolutely fantastic. Like I said, early contender for match of the year in my opinion. Now next up we go into our second main event for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Jay White is defending against Kazuchika Okada. This had a hard, hard act to follow and they absolutely did. These guys have such an insane chemistry together that every match I've ever seen them together in, whether it be a solo match, a tag match, a six-man match, they deliver. They sell their storyline. These guys have such a rich history already at this point that they can call back within the match to different things that they've done, that they can lean on that history when they were in chaos together, when Jay White turned on, on Okada, the different matches that they've had already, the different classics they've had. This was absolutely phenomenal. To follow up a match that that's going to be considered one of the matches of the year and put on as great a match as these guys had kudos to these guys this could have easily been my favorite match on most other shows on this card the match it follows is i like better but i do enjoy this a lot okada does pick up the win here i thought it was absolutely fantastic again i'm gonna break the scale again because i do think it lit it lived up to that this is kind of like if i was grading on a scale of 100 omega and osprey would be a 100 this would be a 99 it's just that close both these matches are absolutely 
absolutely fantastic. I'm giving this one a 6 as well. It did break the charts in my opinion. Like I said, it's it's an absolutely fantastic match. Afterwards, we see a little bit of a maybe a, a respect or face tinge to Jay White as he crawls his way up and kind of hugs Okada. Okada doesn't know how to respond to it. And then from there, we see Shingo Takagi comes out. And Shingo challenges Okada for later on in the year for a for a title match, which is going to be an absolute banger as well. I thought this was all great. Overall, Wrestle Kingdom delivered in so many ways. The match quality was off the charts. The the couple surprises, even though one of the surprises was probably one of the worst hidden secrets with Mercedes Monet, aka Sasha Banks, debuting. But the other surprises, like Shingo challenging here. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. joining TMDK, the different championship changes, uh, the never open weight title changing, the tag titles changing, the junior title changing, the U.S. title changing, the, the world title changing, the ta- everything. I thought this was an absolutely fantastic show from top to bottom. The one criticism I will give it, it, it was a long show, and in full disclosure, I did fall asleep before the two main events, and that's had to go back and re-watch the the two main events and that's no knock on the quality of the show just the fact that i at that point it was five in the morning here and i had been up since 1 30 in the morning or before 1 30 in the morning to watch this so that is the one little bit of a criticism i have is the length of the show however it didn't at any point feel like it dragged Overall, I'm giving the whole show a 5. I thought it was thoroughly fantastic. I definitely think you should search this out. If you don't have New Japan World, it is worth signing up for the $10. Even if you just sign up for this month and cancel, this is worth $10 to watch, or roughly $10 in America, wherever you may be. It's $999 yen, which ends up being right around that $10 mark in America. It changes because the the conversion rate fluctuates. This is worth paying that just to see that. You're going to pay more than that to watch, and I'm not knocking any of these companies, a a GCW pay-per-view show. You're going to pay more than that, or internet pay-per-view, whatever you want to call it. You're going to pay more than that to watch an AEW pay-per-view. You're going to pay more than this to watch an Impact pay-per-view. This is worth the money. I definitely say if you haven't watched it and you're okay with spoilers, if is obviously you went through this i would plop down that money even if it's for just this month and i would get this with all that being said let's smash that like button share the video subscribe if you haven't and if you made it all the way to the end let's uh let's give respect to the new mercedes monet let's either put sasha banks mercedes money whatever you want to put the ceo in the comments let's show some respect to sasha you can put your favorite sasha moment if you like just something about sasha banks let's put that there in the comments with all that being said my name is george coles and this has been my review of wrestle kingdom 17